I've got the recipe for you. This dip is just amazing. It just melts in the mouth. Bon Appetit! Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. I'm joining you today from the Fresh Market grocery store right here in Augusta. And you know, lately I've been doing recipes that feature things that you make from scratch, but that you also use pre-made products that make cooking easy and fun. So today I'm looking at the Fresh Market's website on some of their new recipes and some of their new products. So we're going to do four recipes today using these ingredients. We're going to start with an arugula and spinach salad that has toasted pecans, it has Parmesan cheese, Granny Smith apples, but the best part is the dressing. It's a maple balsamic vinaigrette. You will just love it. Then we're going to move into ribs that we're actually not going to do on the grill because their craft beer barbecue sauce makes these ribs scrumptious. But we're going to finish them off on top of the stove to get those grill marks. Then what about an apple fritter for dessert? You know, some of the new spices that they've got here in the store, this pumpkin pie spice is amazing. But this is just an old school dessert that you're gonna really love. And then of course, we can't end a wonderful Southern meal without a wonderful Southern drink. So we're gonna do their bee sting tea. And you might have a little bit of a buzz going if you put too much of the vodka in there. But it's just a great beverage. So in Vera's Corner today, we're gonna go over the five mother sauces that are really the basic elements of some of our classic recipes. Okay, so I've got just a little bit more shopping to do and then we're going to head to the kitchen and get started on these recipes. You know, I just love shopping at the Fresh Market. It reminds me that it's quaint and cozy. You always see people just really relaxing and not in a hurry in there. And it reminds me of this child going into the A&P store with my mom to grocery shop. So I picked up everything, and you know how we all are using, trying to use uh, recyclable bags. Well, they have an insulated cooler bag that I love. So I just got all of my ingredients. I stuffed them down in the cooler. And then if I have to run a few errands, I don't, I don't have to worry about what's in the bag. But today we're making recipes that are directly from the Fresh Markets website. This recipe is for a wonderful salad. It uses their arugula and spinach mix. And then I'm highlighting a brand new dressing that they have maple balsamic vinaigrette and they make it so easy it's located right there next to the lettuces in the produce department so very simple recipe but i've kind of put my own twist on it you know i always do that so their recipe uses celery and i'm going to substitute some other things in it today and it just shows you if the bones of a recipe are good you can make it your own by substituting some things that you like or eliminating some things that you don't like so I've got my lettuces all clean and ready to go. I'm gonna add in some fresh fennel, which is just a wonderful change of pace to a salad. Just a great ingredient. And then I've got Granny Smith apple that I'm gonna use in this that's just really tasty and good. Makes it kind of tart with that maple balsamic dressing that's gonna go on top. And then a lot of times on a salad where I use a tart apple, I'm going to use a candy pecan. But today, since I'm using this dressing, it is a little bit on the sweet side. I chose the toasted pecans. And you know, all of these nuts, whether they're the sugared ones or the roasted ones, are right there in the bins. And you know, every single time I go in the store, I walk up and down that aisle because there's always something new. You might find something that you didn't know was there. Now how about some freshly shaved Parmesan? And guess what? They do that for you too. It's right there next to the cheeses. You can get it really um, thickly grated or finely grated. It's just wonderful. All right, so I love my salad hands. They are just great for tossing that salad up. I'm gonna leave it alone until the presentation because we're gonna put this dressing on right at the last minute. So, when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on a craft beer barbecue baby back ribs that you can do without a grill. You don't wanna miss it. So come back with me in just a few minutes. Back 
back, everybody. Are you getting hungry? Well, I'm enjoying this menu today. And like I said, all of these recipes are on the Fresh Market website. So ribs, I'm telling you, we probably have them at least three times a month at our house. My husband just loves to cook on the grill. But what if it was pouring down rain? This recipe is perfect for a day like that because these are going to taste just like they came off the grill. So Craft Beer Barbecued Ribs is the name of the recipe. And this is a great new sauce that the Fresh Market has come up with. And they make it easy for you. It's right there where you go to purchase the ribs in the meat department. So it's just right there, easy to put together. And so the ribs are actually really clean that I picked up today. A little bit of heavy fat on one side. So I went ahead and trimmed off a little bit of that excess fat. But I've got it on my um, aluminum foil on the pan ready to go and there's a great rub that I'm going to put together to go on it. It uses a tablespoon of each of these three ingredients. Kosher salt, ground black pepper, and brown sugar. So I'm just going to mix that up with a fork. And I've got my oven set at 300. So this is going to be kind of slow and long and that's what keeps them and makes them really tender. So once you've got this mixed together, I'm literally just going to rub this all over the ribs. And you know, this process with the aluminum foil, I mean the house, that's another thing. When you cook on the grill, sometimes all you get in the house is the smoke. Well, you're going to get this wonderful aroma all through the house when you do this inside. And you know, for those of you women out there that maybe are a little intimidated by the whole grill factor, what a surprise for your husband to come home from work and you've cooked ribs all by yourself. All right, once you've done that, you're just gonna wrap this up tightly in the foil. But once this goes in the oven, after about an hour and a half to two hours, you're going to take it out and you're going to baste it really, really well with that craft beer barbecue sauce. So I just smeared it all over the top. And when you look at it, you see all these wonderful chunks. Well, that is like six different kinds of mustard seeds. So if you're a mustard-based barbecue sauce lover, I really encourage you to try this. It's just a really thick, wonderful barbecue sauce. All right, so let's move this over to the oven. And you see, I've already got one pan in. So I'm going to pop that out, and you know what? I can put it directly on my star granite countertop because it's, it's safe. All right, let me move that to the middle rack. All right, so let's see what this looks like now. Ooh, goodness, that aroma is fantastic. All right, so I've got my lodge griddle on about a medium high. So let's move this down. And now I'm going to transfer these ribs to the griddle. And now we're going to get those great grill marks. Hey, your husband, he's going to think, what have you been doing? You've been learning how to do that without me. Okay, so now you can just shake up that sauce. Let's pour a little bit more right there on top. You see what I mean about it? Ooh. All right. So in Vera's Corner today, I'm going to go over all the mother sauces, which are really the key elements to cooking. And then when we come back from the break, how do apple fritters sound? So I'm going to just keep going with this and we'll see you back in just a few minutes. Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund. Go get it. The five mother sauces are the building blocks of many classic dishes. Mastering these is a big step, so let me give you a tip about each one. The five mother sauces we will go over are bechamel, velouté, espagnole, tomato, and hollandaise. Bechamel is a white sauce made with a roux and dairy, like cream or milk. Bechamel is the base for many cheese sauces and soups. 
Veloute is another white sauce that is made with roux and a white stock, like chicken or veggie. The process is identical to making bechamel, but with a different liquid. Veloute is the starting point for gravies and countless soups. Espanol continues this trend with the addition of mirepoix, the mixture of diced onions, carrots, and celery that is fundamental to many sauces and soups. Also, the liquid used is veal or beef stock. Espanol is the base for border lace and demi-glaze. Tomato sauce is so simple to make. It can be made with a roux and crushed tomatoes, or even just crushed tomatoes that you've reduced. From there, you can add herbs and garlic, or keep it simple. Finally, hollandaise is made with egg yolks, clarified butter and acid, like lemon juice or vinegar. Hollandaise might be the most temperamental to make, but it's worth it. Master these sauces and become a master chef. You know, we get a lot of compliments on Vera's Corner, so I hope you enjoyed that one today. And keep those sauces in mind for when you're trying to do something a little different. All right, apple fritters. If you are between the ages of 35 and 40 in Augusta, Georgia, then you probably went to a school carnival where I was standing there frying apple fritters from the crack of the morning until the end of the day. So I know this fragrance very well and I know my children and grandchildren love apple fritters. So I hope you'll try this recipe. All right, so I've got my flour in a bowl. I'm gonna add all of my other dry ingredients to it. I've got granulated sugar, baking powder, kosher salt, Wait a minute, there's some bacon powder left in that bowl. Let me get it all out of there. I want them to puff up really pretty. All right, then this is a pumpkin pie spice that's part of what's new at the Fresh Market. They've got a whole new spice section that is actually really great. All right, so I'm just gonna whisk those dry ingredients together. And then I'm guarding like a hawk my large cast iron Dutch oven that I've got about four inches of peanut oil in it and I need it to be on 350. So I really love to use an electric skillet because it kind of monitors itself, but to do this many, you've really got to have deep fat and this works really well. So I'm hovering right at 350 right now. Okay, so the next wet part of this batter is the apple cider part. So I reduced some apple cider for about 10 minutes on top of the stove just to get a little bit of thickness there. Then I refrigerated it. So now I pulled it back out of the refrigerator and I'm gonna add to that two whole eggs because again, now the liquid is really cold. Got some vanilla extract and some melted butter. All right, so let's whisk that together. All right, let me check that temp. It's still doing great. All right, so now we're gonna add the wet to the dry. You know, this is just, people think about this in the fall, but it is good any time of the year. It's just a great dessert. All right, so I'm gonna mix that together. Once this is fully incorporated, I have cut up a, you know, honey crisp or whatever your favorite hard, kind of sweet tart apple is. And I, you know, I'm an expert on cutting up fruit because I cut it up for my husband every night. So everybody at the, at the, in the TV production group can't believe how fast I can peel an apple. And then you just want to core it. And I just simply cut it right down the middle and cube it. So these are about a fourth of an inch cubes that I'm going to add to that. So you've got a really nice batter now, and there will be good chunks of that apple in there. So the next part of this, 350, I'm dead on it. I'm gonna take my scoop, and we're gonna scoop, and let me turn that up just a little bit. And you don't wanna overcrowd. So that's another part about using this larger, deep skillet, is to get that so they float up as they get done. The apple part is kind of heavy. That's why they're sinking just a little bit. 
And then if you've got a child that's with you doing this, you want to make sure everybody's cleared of the, the oil just in case. So we're going to be looking for a golden brown on these. You see how they just rise to the top? They fall and then rise. Oh, and I love the way we're going to present these today too. All right, so let me get this uh, glaze made. I've got confectioner's sugar. I'm going to add to that some apple cider. And I'm going to start whisking this a little bit at a time. The other, you know, this is why when these are done and I've drained them on the paper towel, we're going to dip them directly into this wonderful glaze and really get that great flavor on there. Okay, those are looking good down there. All right, so I'm going to add to this some corn syrup and vanilla. And I may not need all that apple cider. All right, so I'm gonna get these flipped and onto that paper towel to drain. Dip them in the glaze during the break, but don't worry, I'll show it to you. And then when we come back from the break, I'm gonna show you how to set this up in a really attractive fashion. So I'll see you back in just a minute. got a fantastic southern spread today and you know I have to certainly thank my friend Gary McMahon who's an avid hunter and I was talking about this segment one night we were all together for dinner and he said well you know do you need any deer antlers for props and I thought yes well he brought a ton of these things to my house I laid them out all over the dining room table and I just could not wait to have a reason to use them on the show so I love the way everything looks and you know, from t in terms of using things that don't make any sense to a table setting, you can do those sorts of things when you do a buffet. So the under part of this, my tablecloth is actually an afghan that I had in a closet because I don't use those colors in my den anymore. But it is the perfect tablescape for this presentation. And then my charcuterie board that another good friend, Julie Vogelin, made for me um, is just an, a gorgeous combination of bringing all these textures together with the wood. My pottery, my wooden vessels, um, and then wildflowers with feathers, and you know, honestly, these are fake pine cones. You can't even tell it. So just pine needles, I mean. You just, you just wanna use what you've got access to and make it beautiful. So let's walk through what we did today. So the salad is just amazing. I tossed it at the very end. Um, you can put a little bit of lemon juice on the apples if you're scared they're gonna color, but you know, by the time you put the dressing on, it's just beautiful. So this is the maple balsamic vinaigrette is amazing all right look at those ribs when they come out of the oven you're just going to turn them on their backside and just cut through so you have single ribs I love to use my large cast iron as a vessel all right so this is the craft beer barbecue sauce that's loaded with mustard seeds this would be a wonderful gift maybe around Father's Day with a bunch of other things for grilling I love that and then the um, apple fritters, which are amazing. So I left you getting those fried, flipping them in the oil. Once they were good and brown on all sides, I just put a rack down with paper towels so that some of that excess oil, and you know what? I used peanut oil, so remember that too when you're deep frying. Um, I let those drain, and then we mixed up that wonderful glaze with the apple cider and the corn syrup and the vanilla, and then you just want to rotate that quickly into that glaze, and then use that same rack without the paper towel. Just let that glaze drip through, so those just look wonderful. All right, but how could you serve those? other than eating them on their own. Well, you know, I'm a big fan of Leopold's and this shipped directly to our door here in Augusta from Savannah. So let's just put a couple of scoops that you can have with those fritters on the plate. Man, you know, and look at these fritters. I mean, just look 
how yummy and delicious those things are going to be with that ice cream. So what's a party without a little bit of a cocktail? So how about a bee sting tea for a drink? Well, I've stirred together the um, Fresh Markets tea that is just really delicious. And if you want to add a twist to that, you know, in the Augusta area, we do Arnold Palmer's with the lemonades. So I'm, I've added that. I've put in the uh, ginger bee mix, about a cup. I've added a little bit of vodka to it. You don't have to do that. Then I've stirred it with my wooden spoon that I made when I was in middle school, for heaven's sakes. So we've poured it over ice, garnished with the lemon. It's just perfect. So you're ready to go with the wonderful buffet. I hope that you will look at these recipes on the Fresh Markets website. And as I always say, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. Come back with me next week. It's all about Okra Magazine. To book Vera as a speaker for your next event, email info at veryvera.com.